What's up everyone? Welcome back to Miami Miles. My name is Mickey. In today's video, the 765 LT Spider gets criticized. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to walk you through everything I absolutely hate about my $451,000 supercar. So, let's get right into it. The first thing that I hate about the 765 LT Spider is the tech. Literally, follow me. This car, even though it's beautiful and tasteful, ugh, I'll jump in here. All right. So, like at first glance, it looks beautiful, right? It's got all this carbon fiber, all this jewelry, all this stuff that makes it look expensive. But then you turn the car on. It does sound good. But take a look at this right here. Let me see the camera. So you guys will see that the turn indicators are actually there. They didn't put them in the screen. It looks like because this screen scrolls down in track mode, they put the turn indicator there and there. It actually took me some time to find it. There's the seatbelt warning and the emergency brake at all. And these little screens, they're actually not that great, not that easy to see. You can see from behind the steering wheel, you can't see anything. And, and then you actually take this finger and you put the car in reverse, right? So the moment that it gets put in reverse, you can see this backup camera. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that or if it's picking it up, but look at how pixelated it is, right? And obviously we've got those little lines, right? But as we turn the wheel, the lines don't move. <laughs> so it's just like this 8-bit looking parking line. Once it's in track mode, here's the backup camera. <laughs> Look at that. It's like two inches. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn the car off now. So yeah, backup camera, um, backup sensors, everything about it is, is just old school. I'm just sitting here watching my favorite YouTube channel, right? Alright. Now the audio's on my phone. It loses... It loses Bluetooth connectivity, and then it won't reconnect after a phone call. And I know you guys are like, oh, Mickey, that's not that big of a deal in a supercar, but it is. This is a car from 2022, it's $451,000, and the stereo has problems pairing, the stereo doesn't sound good, the backup cameras and the sensors are terrible, and the tech overall is a big piece of shit. The next thing I hate about the car is just how much it vibrates. Like, literally, I'm gonna cut to some of the vibrations now. Just because the AC is on, listen to the vibrations. You hear that? Watch this, I'm gonna turn the AC off now. Oh, I decided to keep going this time. <laughs> oh, bro. So because it is an LT, these guys absolutely removed all the sound deadening. I believe they mounted the engine straight into the rear subframe and literally every single vibration in the car resonates through the cabin up your ass and into your soul. And I know I've said that before, but now you guys get an idea. It vibrates so much to the point that you're like, is this actually a $451,000 car or is this just a big piece of shit? But guys, the crazy thing is like, for somebody who's driven, you know, Ferraris and Lambos and Porsches, if you jump into this car, you're gonna think it's gonna fall apart, but I believe that those vibrations are indeed a part of the LT ethos. I just wish we would have gotten a disclaimer, a warning, something to let us know that it's completely normal for an LT car to have those vibrations. The next thing that absolutely sucks about this car is the front nose lift. This lift is the slowest lift I've ever seen in my entire life. From the time you tap the button to the time the front actually raises, you're looking at about 10 seconds, which you'll see right here. Lift up. Bro, just wait a second. This is literally my life, come on. 
Still not up. Come on, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Let's go. I think that, there we go. So as you saw, people get absolutely pissed off with you when you're trying to make your way into a parking lot because not only does it take forever to lift, but it doesn't lift if you've got the steering wheel even slightly turned, which means you've got to go into every parking lot at an angle, not turn their wheel, activate the lift for 10 seconds to have the car go up into the parking lot. That is a big, big, big problem in a car that's this expensive. If you damage this piece on its own, that's going to set you back upwards of $40,000. So yes, the nose lift is a big, big problem. The next thing I want to talk about is this car's looks. How sexy and sleek and modern and tasteful and expensive it looks. Those looks absolutely blow me away, but they do that for just about everybody on a road. Every single time I take this to a gas station, every single time I pull in and I'm about to fuel up the car, this happens. What's up, man? How you doing? What is this, bro? Yeah, it's a Lambo. It's a Lambo. How much? About 69,000. Yeah, bro. 69 grand. Oh, this shit's sick. Yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah, you want to take a picture or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah let yeah. me take a picture for you, bro. Yeah, it's only up too much on it, you know? Oh, oh kind right. of expensive. Look good, bro. Yeah, thanks, bro. Look good. There you go, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Can I get in it? Oh, man, not right now. I kind of got to go. What about the side door? Yeah, the side passenger. Door. What about it? Can I get in that one? Bro, honestly, I got to go right now. I'm trying to actually get this, this thing to put gas in the car. I'm trying to go. I got to go to work. Whoa! The doors go up? Bro. Dude, the doors <laughs> yeah, go up! The doors go up. Yeah. Hey, do you mind closing the door so I can get going? Oh, oh yeah, bro. Yeah. Hey, thanks, bro. What's your name again? Yeah. All right. I love you. Oh, love you, man. So now that you've seen how much attention the car gets, and I know that was a dramatization of what happens in real life, but literally, it's a direct reflection of the conversations I have all the time with people at gas stations. I want to talk about what happens once I leave the gas station, and that is the gas meter. I can't stand the gas meter in this car because it's the only gas meter I've ever seen in history that instead of showing you your gas level, recalculates your range at every single mile. All right, so check this out. Right now it doesn't even tell us how many miles to empty. So it's just like, there it goes, 180. All right, so it's recording 180 right now. 175. <laughs> 170, it's getting worse. 165, so we started 160. 155, it keeps going down, bro. I don't understand this fuel gauge. Like I've never had a fuel gauge in my life that keeps going down like this. Look at this, 145. 140. Soon I'll be at zero, like it's crazy. I'll drive this car hard one time and then the gas meter will report five miles to empty. I go fill it up and it takes like three gallons because the tank's still three quarters full. <laughs> 120. It lit 150, look at it. Real time, 110. How is that reliable? 100. We literally just started at 160 and it's already at 100 miles to empty. Watch what happens too when I get on it one time. It's gonna go from like 105 to three. As the gas meter reported upwards of 160 miles and then it went all the way down to 70 and then it started climbing again that is insane when the car gets low on range it actually becomes borderline impossible to figure out how much range you've got left until you're out of gas and you take that for granted 
You take that for granted when you're driving a regular car, but when you're driving one of these, it makes it so you end up getting gas when you've got three or four gallons left in the tank. And I can't express how annoying that is, especially when you start getting this anxiety with the range. So that's perhaps one of this car's biggest Achilles heels. That being said, that being said, I believe that we're now situated in the area wherein the biggest flaw of this car resides. And I think it's the car's most beautiful component, this wing. Sure, this wing is poetry in motion. This might be the most beautiful uh, structure and engineered wing in history. It's so big, it's so long, and when it flips up, when you apply a certain amount of brake pressure after doing an acceleration run, it's absolutely breathtaking. But as it's situated just like this, when you're driving at regular speeds, you can't see out the back of the car. Out that little window, all you see is the upper edges of this wing. So right now, I can't see shit out the back because the wing is up. But watch this. <laughs> you can't see anything. So in addition to the wing, when you're moving this beautiful car, um, you realize that it's something that's here to stress you out, something that's here to raise your blood pressure, to increase your stress levels, like your cortisone goes through the roof when you drive this thing in traffic because it's so purposeful, so fast that it tempts you to speed in it. It tempts you to put your foot all the way down. And when you do, even going at speeds 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, you exceed the triple digits within just a couple short seconds. Now, most of you think that that's this car's party trick. And honestly, I do too. But after you do that four or five times on a single journey, it makes you so stressed, so sweaty, that, that you're left in this state of, of bliss, this state. Like imagine, you know, having sex. And I know I, I make a lot of comparisons with this, but imagine having sex six times in a row. By the time you're done with round number six, you're exhausted, you're sweaty, your cortisol levels are through the roof. Like you're just stressed out. I merge back onto this freeway in beautiful South Beach. All right, you ready? Foot all the way down, first gear, go. As you guys saw, the fact that this car is as race purpose as it is, doesn't mean that someone that doesn't have a race car level experience can jump in and enjoy it. Now, I think that that's a good thing. I, I know that my wife should be able to enjoy this car just like I can. The problem with that is that it's so damn fast that it has so little traction in these rear wheels that I wouldn't want her taking the car out on a rainy day or I wouldn't want her pushing the limits of the car on a highway because this thing, even though it looks as beautiful as it does, as innocent, as it does is actually a little devil and this car will extract from you every negative inclination emotion desire that you could ever experience it's like someone pouring a gallon of vodka down your throat getting you super drunk and expecting you to behave yourself that's probably not going to happen at least it won't happen with me so the fact that my wife can jump in this and go for a spin sometimes scares the living shit out of me even though she loves it but Guys, I think the sum of this car's parts, all of the things that make it imperfect, that make me hate it, actually make me love it. I f love this car. Whether it's the tech, the vibrations, the power, the wing that comes up and blocks my rear view visibility, the fact that my wife can drive it, all of these things together, they're put into a big cauldron and stirred by the witch in Snow White to give us a potion that makes me fall in love i am in love with this thing and really i can't say that i hate it because i love it and even though everybody in the comments like mickey flip it and make a profit guys it's not always about the money sometimes it's just about having a car that you love and enjoying the shit out of it so if you guys agreed with that video if you didn't you know i don't care whatever you guys opinion is it's your opinion but go down below let me know what that opinion is in the comments give me a like give me a subscribe and i look forward to seeing you next video take care